Yo, I saw an interview with you before, and you said you thought you was blackballed from the industry. Why is that? Um, nobody did, never did nothing with me. Okay, you got to elaborate on that. I mean, a lot of these rappers, even though it don't be a smooth transition, they get to go other places and make music for other imprints. Like, I was one of the guys that brought, like, Kanye West to the, to the, uh, Nick the Band crib to submit beats. Mr. Bentley kicked the nigga out and then signed a good music two years later. Mr. Bentley didn't even know who Kanye West was at the time. You see what I'm saying? So I had other options and, you know what I mean? Even though I never exercised him at my time being on Bad Boy, after the Bad Boy situation was over, nobody really reached out. And, like, it was like, what I was getting is that, no, nah, because Puff, you know, I want Puff to come back and da -da -da -da, even though... That wasn't the case. I had after he moved on and went to um, Atlanta, um, Interscope and moved and passed. I mean, and, and moved on from Atlantic. Then I had no legal um, obligations to to him any any longer because that was the extent of my contract. He went to a whole nother distribution uh, situation. He couldn't take the roster that was Atlantic over to Interscope, so that null and voided the contract. But under people's perception, I still had ties legally bonded to Puff, and nobody was willing to do the research, no matter what I was telling them. So I just felt like I wasn't, per se, blackballed by him out of his mouth. Just the dark cloud that he cast on me by not, you know what I mean, actually putting me out in the time frame that I had, and just by nobody taking interest in me after that situation. You know, I always wanted to ask you this question, and I didn't even know that was the angle you was coming from. You, you What you mean? You're clearly nice. You you are nice with the lyrics. You're nice with rhyming. But I but nobody nobody from that band ever went on to get solo deals, and I never understood why. No, I did. I got a deal. I got a solo deal in '06. That's what I'm saying. Puff kept his promise and gave no, me no, a no, solo. No, 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 no. I'm talking about after the, after the bad boy situation was done. Right, nobody, right, right, right. Nobody right. went on to other labels like, yo, you know what? I'm a free agent now. Sign me as a solo artist. You understand where I I'm mean, coming from? Yeah, it wasn't like, I mean, I know factually I was doing music at a high volume. It may not have been um, major releases, but as far as the mixtape game, you know what I mean, I kind of had a chokehold in a mixtape game. I had a, I had a uh, Gangsta Grills out that really did really well. And, you know, I, mean, I had a mixtape series, my hate mail, my Rama Crime mixtape series. It got write ups in the source. And then me and Babs' whole thing, they was going to package just as a situation. But then she didn't go with the deal. Then I was left with a solo deal. And by being that I was in a production, meaning we have, I mean, shared a control of, of the music. Puff left it up to us to do the music. You know what I'm saying? So it was really like Puff was just a the, 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 the major company that was giving me an opportunity to put my music out through my production company. So what I'm saying is I, I did good business and it wasn't like the business was bad. Just nobody felt as though, you know what I mean, I guess I was valuable enough to um, actually give me a situation after that situation was over. And the way I got my solo situation, I mean, I got down to my last couple thousand dollars and I just rented a car and went up to go holler at Puff. By that time, I had a good relationship with not only Puff, but with the security. So that's how I kept ties on him at, uh, um, over all the years because Paulie and him fucked with me. Bondi and him fucked with me. It wasn't his, his staff, per se. It was the nigga that was holding him down. Like, we fuck with you, Ness. Anytime Puff around, we gonna let you know where he at. And we're going to give you access because we already know how he feel about you. He fuck with you. So that's how I got my solo deal. I just was grown man shit. I rented a car, went up to New York. I mean, when it was on Broadway, went to the office. Everybody greeted me to hold the same National Guard niggas that uh, Jada Kiss was talking about on the radio. They love me. Them National Guard niggas love me. Nice. <laughs> High fives. Puff upstairs. I went upstairs. I was cool. I was the nigga that was going and going, go fuck with going to the office and talking to the marketing, talking to the 
the electronic division and tech talking. I'm that nigga. So by the time it was coming to get my solo deal, I already had a rapport with everybody in there. So so whenever I go in the building, they just would direct me where Puff was. Like, yo, he's in his office. He's over there. Puff, yeah, go holler at. I mean, let's go holler at Puff. Because I was good with everybody. I would go holler at Mel Gibson. I would go holler at this one, that one, that one. I would nigga that try to learn every every department. Because Puff was Puff was looking for was self-sufficient artists. Nigga that would go work their own uh records at the club. Nigga that would go do their own beats, record their own sessions, try to mix their own records down. So he tried to bring us up like super soldiers. So I was that nigga. I was going to the the little uh Sean John internships, learning that shit. I was going over here. I wanted to learn the shit that he was giving me access to learn. And it helped me all these years. Helped me have skin tough when I was being ridiculed for, for, for picking for picking that situation. And it just gave me a lot of good things and tools, instruments I use to be resilient, to make it enough to where I'm actually doing well now and having this second win and everybody's receiving me. And it's not distasteful or it's not to where niggas tired of it. Niggas just like, damn, that was actually nice. Fuck. What? We not, you know what I mean? So people were starting to catch up, but it had to take all those times put together with the way the social media is and the way the internet climate is and the way digital world is for, for, for me to be here and to be thriving like I am right now. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.